Uh, today's presentation will be demonstrating some in vivo studies of the electron paramagnetic resonance imaging where the ERI TM600 tomograph was involved. And my presentation will consist of two parts. Uh, so at the beginning, I will briefly describe the methodology and how the experiments are conducted. And then I will present some real data and results of uh, ERI TM600 applications. Uh, so as you already know from our previous re webinars, uh, the ERI solution is based on electron paramagnetic resonance phenomenon, uh, where the source of the signal are substances that contain unpaired electrons, such as, for example, free radicals, transition metals, or as it is in the case of in vivo studies, so-called the spin probes. And the uniqueness of the method is that apart from the simple distribution of the spin probe in the animal's body, it is also possible to obtain spectral information that reflect the tissue microenvironments, including, for example, the redox state, oxygen, thiols concentrations, and recently the pH and also the inorganic phosphorus mapping become more and more popular. And thanks to this possibility of imaging the aforementioned uh, parameters, the EPR, EPRI technique finds many applications in biomedical research, such as, for example, tumor research, uh, diagnostics of neurodegenerative disease, cardiac studies, or even in drug delivery mechanisms. Uh, so far, the development of tomography based on electron paramagnetic resonance has been carried out mainly in the academic domain. So most of the devices require specialized knowledge in such fields as magnetic resonance, signal analysis, or image reconstruction. And of course, it was an inconvenience for the researchers who are focused on biomedical or in vivo topics, because all imaging systems should be easy and operate, provide quickly and repeatable measurements, and allow for friendly and simple data analysis and image, vi image visualization. Uh, therefore, we focused on creating a friendly system for EPR imaging in every discipline of life science, and we call our solution the ERI tomography. Uh, as I mentioned, the in vivo studies uh, based on EPR, EPRI required administration of the external spin probe into the animal's body. In general, there are two types of spin probe, the solid and liquid. Solid spin probes are usually implemented in the different parts of the animal's body and allow for local measurements of EPR signal. And here, the main paramagnetic substances used for this purpose is uh, lithium phthalocyanin, in short, LIPC. And this type of spin probe is currently used in clinical trials in a form of biocompatible particle called or micro oxychips or, or, or simple oxychips. However, liquid spin probes are more suitable for imaging the um, uh, imaging, and we can distinguish uh, two types of them. The trials, which are suitable for imaging oxygen concentration, and the second family is nitroxide, which are very useful for imaging redox state. And also nowadays, many researchers are focused uh, are focusing on the multifunctional spin probes, which have a big potential due to the unique properties, for example, uh, increase the sensitivity or for more than, than just one parameter of microenvironment or accumulating in specific regions or simple crossing or not the blood brain barrier. And now I would like to show the main differences between the ERI techniques and other imaging modalities, such as, for example, MRI, PET, or CT. Uh, and I, as I said, a unique property of the EPRI is the ability to map in the absolute value of oxygen concentration, redox state, and acidicity in the tissue in vivo. And those parameters cannot be directly measured by other imaging techniques. For example, in MRI and PET, the, the oxygen level is always measured indirectly or by the blood saturation like it is in both MRI, or it is qualitative information about the hypoxic region like it is in PET. Redox state is based on free radicals mechanisms rather than typical contrast enhancement, so it is a, therefore a direct information between spin probe and microenvironment. pH or PA 
in, in, in organic phosphorus maps can also provide unique and interesting information, for example, from the tumor microenvironment. And additional advantages of EPRI are the use of low magnetic fields and lack of ionizing radiation. Uh, let's talk a little more about the redox state. And as I mentioned, one of the unique properties of EPR imaging is the possibility to monitoring the reactive oxy the oxygen species. Uh, those reactive oxygen species, of course, are constantly generated in living cells as a side product of uh, oxidative metabolism and the damaging effects on the cells components is determi determined by the rate of the generation of ROS and the concentration and efficiency of, an of antioxidants. Factor increasing the rates of uh, ROS generation such as for example uh, ionizing radiation or metal ions as well as the factor decreasing the accident, accident capacity leads to oxidative stress causing enhanced, enhanced oxidative damage of cellular components. So in general, we can define oxidative stress as an imbalance between the production of free radicals and the ability of the body to neutralize their harmful effects, which is usually called the redox state. And what is important here is that the, uh, the, the stronger oxidative stress will produce greater changes in the redox state. And also what is uh, an, an interesting fact here, the recent publications uh, indicate that the oxidative stress play, plays also an important role in uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. All right, so I think it's so much for the introduction. In the following part, I would like to present you uh, some in vivo results using ERI TM600 tomograph. And as a first example, I would like to show you the classic uh, static imaging of the distribution of spin probe in the animal's body. Uh, here presented images show the distribution of the trital spin probe in the head and in the lower part of the mouse body. On the left side, we can see the EPR images overlapped on the CT scan. Uh, and on the other side of the slide, there is a three-dimensional visualization of the spin probe distribution in mouse head. Uh, as you can see, the spin probe we used did not cross the blood brain barrier, which is clearly visible in the presented figures. And presented data were published last year in Free Radical Biology at Medicine Journal. Uh, the static images can provide very interesting information about the spin probe biodistribution. However, for in vivo studies, the dynamic imaging is usually much more desirable. And thanks to the possibility of fast and repetitive imaging, it is possible to collect images with high time resolution that provide information about the temporal distribution of the spin probe in the body. And this makes it possible to study the pharmacokinetics of the spin probe in the animal's body and conduct more and conclude more about the physiological processes. And what we mean by the dynamic is repeating the imaging process, possibly in the shortest time, and then tracking the changes in EPR signal intensity for each voxel over the time. And this tracking generates the signal intensity versus time curve. And fitting mathematical models, it is possible to obtain pharmacokinetic parameters. And in our study, we have been used the empirical mathematical model, which is often used in BCI MRI studies. And in this model, two phases can be distinguished, the inflow phase and the outflow phase. Therefore, the empirical mathematical model can provide such information as uh, uh, inflow and outflow rate of the spin probe into and out the tissue, time to reach the maximum concentration, or even we can analyze the shape uh, of the uh, profiles of the amplitude versus time curves. And why we did why did we uh, decide to use the empirical mathematical model? Let's look at the study from 2015. Uh, they they used uh, the, the study in the study the usage of uh, MCP spin probe it was a nitroxide, uh, and the redox state was imaged in a marine model of Alzheimer's disease. Those data suggest that the antioxidant capacity began to decrease in Alzheimer's mice from nine months of age. 
and nevertheless present the dynamic studies using EPR imaging and only analyze the outflow phase of the spin probe, mainly due to the limitation of temporal resolution, and only the high temporal resolution EPR system allows the capture of images related to the early inflow phase. And as we notice, sometimes the out analyzing only the auto outflow phase does not provide enough information to observe significant changes. And for example, uh, the graph on, on the right shows the dynamic of signal amplitude in the mouse head for two different probes. One of them penetrates uh, inside the cells. It was the HMP, uh, marked as a blue, and while the other remains only in the extracellular space. It was a free CP uh, marked as red. The values from the upper table show that analyzing only the outflow phase does not allow to observe changes between the probes. On the other hand, the additional parameters obtained by analyzing both the inflow and the outflow phase provide information in which the differences are clearly visible. A comparison of those processes will make it possible to separate information uh, about the reduction coming from the intercellular space and extracellular space. And finally, we conclude that uh, thanks to the combination of different spin probes, it is possible to perform comprehensive tests and separate the different mechanisms, for example, drug delivery mechanism and redox state. And here I would like to present a comparison between the image quality obtained with the simple EPR imaging and images obtained with empirical mathematical model. And for this purpose, we perform an experiment on the spin probe uh, distribution in mouse head. And the nitroxide free CP was used as a probe. The time interval was 23 seconds. And as a result of one hour experiment, we obtained over 150 images. As you can see, the conventional EPR image is represented as a purple volume, purple uh, render does not provide much information except of the contour of the image, image the region. On the other hand, if we analyze the dynamics of the spin probe and visualize one of the parameters describing the transition between the inflow and outflow phase, we were able to obtain much better spatial resolution. Uh, in this example, I would like to introduce you to use the redox states and develop methodology uh, as a parameter describing the drug delivery mechanism. Uh, we have performed simply measurements and uh, simulations where the redox imbalance depending on the dose of vitamin C, which is a great antioxidant. Uh, as you may see, the left side of the slide together with the increase of the dose of vitamin C, the signal amplitude decreased faster with time. It means that free radicals present in the spin probe are swept faster. Uh, because of that, it is possible to monitor free radical mechanisms or the impact of antioxidant uh, on organisms. Uh, the graph on the right shows the expected in vivo effect during head dynamic examination uh, of mice where the uh, neurodegenerative disease was developed. And similarly to the previous example, only use of the empirical mathematical model makes it possible to observe significant differences between both experiments. Okay, uh, the demonstrated examples were carried out with the use of the nitroxide speed probe. And in the following examples, I will present the results obtained with the uh, use of uh, Triton speed probe. Uh, in the next experiment, we used an OX063 as a spin probe, and its spectral properties ensure us better spatial resolution, and uh, which allow us to significantly reduction in measurement time. And in this experiment, a typical 3D imaging took only 5.5 seconds, which during one hour long experiment leads up to collect over 700 images. And in this uh, experiment, we image the lower part of the mouse body, uh, lower back and lower limbs. And after the, exam, uh, after the experiment, uh, we discovered that the, some part of the spin probe accumulated in the bladder were extracted what would be visible on the next slide. 
the graph presents the dynamics of the probe in two different regions. The bladder region, which is color, uh, colored red, and the muscle region in the mouse leg is represented by blue. Uh, in the muscle, the shape of the curve is consistent with empirical mathematical model, and the inflow phase and the outflow phase can be clearly distinguished, while in the bladder, uh, the probe accumulates uh, throughout the experiment, and in the end of the experiment, we may observe the extraction of, of, the, of part of the probe outside the body. On the left side, we may see a three-dimensional visualization of the imaged region, while on the right side, the two-dimensional sections for three main body planes at three time points uh, are shown. Uh, as it can be seen three minutes after the injection of the spin probe, its distribution is quite symmetrical and homogeneous through the entire imaged region. Uh, in the middle of the experiment, the signal intensity begins to decline from the most of the body and the probe is accumulating in the bladder region. Whereas in the last image, the spin probe is only in the bladder except for the urinated part. Uh, moreover, by using interpolation and appropriate post-processing analysis, um, it was possible to increase the time resolution up to 300 milliseconds and thanks to which it was possible to capture and visualize the dynamic of excreting the, the spin probe uh, by the mouse. Uh, the advantage of the developed methodology was the possibility to mapping individual pharmacokinetic parameters and visualize them as a, or two-dimensional cross-sections or three-dimensional images. And thanks to this, it was possible to locate changes or, or disorders, uh, which will be shown in the next example. And those data you, you can see here were also published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry. But the most interesting part was the comparison of the control mouse with the mouse bearing tumor. And here we presented the same experiment with nude mouse bearing a human prostate a tumor implemented in limb, uh, marked uh, in the first image as a, a for T2 region or T1. And the pharmacokinetic curves already show significant differences between normal tissue, marked as N, uh, in the, or in the transition section between normal and tumor tissue, the T1 area, and in the tumor center. Uh, the time to peak maps for normal and tumor bearing mice were compared and the results are represented on the graphs on the bottom left side on the slide. Uh, the figure on the right shows a representative overlay of the obtained time to peak map on the picture of the mouse body and additionally you can see the different pharmacokinetic waveforms from four body regions and here we, we showed from muscle, tumor, kidney, and blood. Uh, so the conducted experiments show that uh, any changes in dynamics directly reflects changes in the functioning of organs and tissue. And here on the left side, uh, various organs are represented by different colors. Even small changes in the dynamic profiles results in uh, significant changes of the, the, of the obtained parameters. And therefore, the differences between the physiological and pathophysiological states are clearly visible. Uh, as a result, it was possible to observe changes in the functioning of particular organs. And we think that ERI has a great potential also in diagnostics of metastasis and, daily, and early detections of neoplastic changes. Obviously, when uh, talking about EPR imaging, one cannot forget about uh, oxygen imaging. It is well known that EPR imaging has the ability to map oxygen in tissue. And in the next few examples, I would like to show you some data obtained using the ERI PM600. Uh, to confirm the possibility of mapping oxygen values, we perform a simple test. We took two samples of LIPC 
One was placed in anaerobic conditions, the top one, and the other in environment containing 2% of oxygen. Then we collect a 3D spatial spectral imaging where two spatial and one spectral dimensions were collected, uh, which provides two types of images. The spatial image showed on the right, or on the right side of the slides, and the image where colors represent the line width of the EPR signal for each pixel. And the histogram shows a clear border between the samples, as well as a high homogeneity in the obtained values. And this simple experiment proved that using ERI TM600, it is possible to map a line width, which after linear calibration has the same meaning as an oxygen map. Uh, Due to the linear relationship between the line width of the EPR signal and the oxygen concentration, it is possible to accurately measure the oxygen value in different parts of the body. And for example, the combination of ERI techniques with the oxygen enables real-time monitoring with an accuracy of oxygen sensitivity better than one tor. And as I said at the beginning of my presentation, the oxygen are small biocompatible compounds and the last reports also show that they are suitable for human studies. Uh, we also perform uh, in vivo imaging of mice implemented with human prostate cancer, uh, in specific was uh, LNCAP model. And here we conduct a four dimensional imaging, uh, three spatial dimensions and one spectral and where the acquisition, the, the imaging time took only eight minutes, which is a great achievement considering in vivo conditions and the necessary of collecting over, over 8,000 projections. And on the right side, you can see a line width map showing the cross section through the center of the tumor. And despite the lack of precise calibration, the lower values of oxygen are observed in the tumor region uh, in comparison to normal tissue which of course may indicate the presence of a hypoxia inside the tumor. And uh, the last experiment I would like to show you was also a 4D imaging of mouse breeding tumor. Uh, but the first image was captured when the mouse was breeding air and the second imaging was performed when the mouse was breeding pure oxygen. Uh, we have investigated a uh, 270 human ovarian cancer cells implemented into the mouse limb, uh, which is here marked uh, as a, a, a mark with an arrow. And the results show that the EPR line with histogram has shifted towards the higher values, reflecting the overall oxygen concentration in the image area. However, the line width map also suggests that the oxygen level in tumor regions has not increased significantly after changing A to oxygen as expected. Okay, uh, due to the fact that the most of our in vivo tests are performed in cooperation with other research institutes, uh, I would like to pay special attention to Professor Marek Murias and Professor Stefan Jurga with the teams for the opportunity to conduct experiments and their mental support. Thank you very much for your attention.